Hi everybody, it's Carl here and welcome to Level Design Breakdown 2D Part 2. Now for this video we're actually going to take a brief step backwards and we're going to create a design kit. So uh, we're going to expand on this bit. And what we're going to do after that is take it into Unity and then we're going to build pretty much the basic part of the level. Okay, so um, first of all, what's a design kit used for? Basically, it's used just like BSP, but because this is 2D, we don't actually have the luxury of having a BSP system. At least, I'm not aware of any. Uh, so, <laughs> unfortunately, we do have to create our own design toolkit. So, this is what we're going to do. The first thing, even before you actually start creating your design toolkit, is find out, for Unity anyway, and really this should apply to any game that you're making, is standardize your units. How many pixels across or how many pixels up is one unit. So considering Unity's using a uh, one unity unit equals one meter, I've said that 64 pixels is one unit. So that's what we're going to base most of this geometry off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I should probably introduce you to the marquee tool. There's two different tools that I use. Fix size, which pretty much does what it says. You sort of s select a height and a width for the piece that you want to outline. So in this case, 64 by 64. I can only select an area that's 64 pixels. The other one that I use is normal, which is pretty much that. So you can sort of select uh, any size that you want. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a basic floor. So we're going to make that 64 across and 32 down. We're just going to select that, copy that onto a new layer, control J, and we're going to drag it down. Now obviously we need to do some cleaning up here, so that's when we go back into normal and then sort of select the area that we want to change fill that in. Now you don't have to do things the way that I'm doing it. This is just a uh, force of habit for me really. It's the way that I've always been working with the sprites. So this is what I'm most comfortable with. So find a workflow and a look for your design kit that suits you. The reason why everything's grey is because well it's the fastest thing and it's the fastest way to sort of construct things for me anyway and when it comes to actually building levels overall I can sort of tell what's what so it's up to you what kind of design kit you wanna what kind of overall look you want for your design kit so um, now that we've got that we've discussed the, the pixel to unit ratio and I've already shown you guys how to make uh, one piece of the geometry that you're gonna use I'm gonna speed up the video and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna narrate it but feel free to slow it down and work at your own pace um, so we'll get to it Okay, so you can see now that I'm just making a second floor piece and the reason why I've made two floor pieces is so that I don't have to work with the same single unit piece, right? I can just cover large areas of ground that I can just use over and over again because I know that that area is going to be sort of open space. So a lot of the times you'll have a corner piece, you want to deal with things like cliff faces and all that where, sort of, where the ground sort of caves in on itself. So that's where corner pieces sort of come in handy. What I'm creating now is a platform. So obviously keep in mind the things that you absolutely need at the beginning. Everything else is secondary. Again, I'm creating another more extended floor piece. And of course, you'll see that I'll create another corner piece. Again, for the same reasons, pretty much. So keep in mind that you should at this point you should just focus on the pieces that you absolutely need you can see that the actual sprite sheet the tile sheet itself is a lot larger than what I'll actually end up with and that's because I want to leave space for any changes that I need to make so if I need to add in extra tiles then I have the ability to do that So that's what you want to do you don't have to do it that way it's just something that I prefer to do um, but I do encourage you to sort of leave space for any changes because you will need to make those changes at some point. So here I'm just making stairs and the audio is going to kick in soon, hopefully, maybe. And yep, audio is coming back pretty much now. 
Okay, so now we have pretty much the basic building blocks that I need for now at least. So what we have here, we have a basic a series of basic ground planes. We have some stairs here, some platforms, a wall here, and an arbitrary unit. Now don't worry about this smiling dude here. He's just uh, there as a scale reference, really. So um, the reason why there's so much space is because I want to leave room for extra pieces that I might need so in case I might need say ladders or some other pieces like um, a wall with doors or a wall with windows especially considering the size well I have the space to make that change I don't have to create a whole new piece so what we need to do from here so just going off uh, let's just say for argument's sake that we have all the pieces that we need what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna save that out as a PNG Let's go, uh, PNG. Yep, there's all my old stuff. Yep, we'll just call that there. Le I'll, I just prefer to leave things as is. Now, we're going to fade to black. And when we come back, we'll actually be in Unity. And all these tiles will be sliced up. And we'll have all the prefabs ready to go to build the actual level. Okay, so now we're here in Unity. And... Before we continue, there's a few things that you need to know about importing in sprite sheets and tile sheets. Now, uh, first of all, if you didn't know, a sprite sheet is basically the character sheet, and a tile sheet is for your environments. But at this stage, it doesn't really matter. Um, for the texture type, if you've started the project and you've selected Enable 2D, it'll automatically import as a sprite anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. But if not, then make sure it's set to sprite. Make sure the sprite mode, depending on how many sprites you have on the sheet, make sure it's either set to multiple or in the player's case here, it's just single. And packing tag, you can put a packing tag in. I'll just go gray box. Now, pixels to units. Now, if you remember when I mentioned it at the start of the video, I said that you need to establish a pixel to unit ratio. This is where it comes important, right? When I said 64 pixels across is one unit, that's why I've got 64 there. The default is 100, but since I've already made the change, um, the uh, sprites, I'm um, sorry, not the sprites, the prefabs, I'm not gonna change that. And, and then all you have to do from there is actually just slice up the uh, sprites themselves. And all you have to do really is just, you can either go slice and do it uh, autom have the um, have unity do it manually I'm um, sorry have unity do it automatically using the slice function um, but I actually discovered that after I started getting into creating the sprites myself uh, so that's one thing that you can do I'll just click apply there okay so what are the prefabs that we have that are important at this stage well we have the floor pieces whoops I'll click apply we have the floor pieces, so the three floor pieces, some stairs, uh, an arbitrary unit, which basically means the reason why I've called it unit is because I'm going to eventually replace it with something else. So it might not be significant, I can just turn off the collider if it's just something decorative. And we have a wall here. Now this can, at this point, this can be anything. This could have a door sort of stuck in it or something like that, but it's not really important at this stage. So let's, um, let's build just a basic floor really and we're the reason why we want to do this is we want to test if the collision works properly so I'm just gonna drag that out all right so I have my two basic floor pieces actually let's drag in floor C as well and I'm just gonna drag it out there now make sure you give your sprites you know proper names don't just give them any random name of course that's up to you um, I don't know why there's a bit of a shadow there. Why is there a shadow there? Let's turn off uh, gizmos, show grid. I have no idea why there's a shadow there. Doesn't matter. Um, I'll look at. I'll have a look at that later on. Anyway, let's let's give this a test run. So he's running around. He's running around. Diddly diddly. All right. So he's good. All right. He's, he's not falling for the, through the floor and. He's sliding around a bit, but that's all in the programming. But other than that, it's good. Now I'm going to speed up the video again, 
and I'm going to have some narration, but feel free to watch it at half speed. Um, you know what, instead of actually narrating, um, I'll actually have voice and if you plan to watch it at a slower speed, I'll just have captions. So you can enable captions and I'll have all that set up anyway. So that's all good. Alright, so pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm just building out, just sort of feel, getting a feel for the level, right? Just playtesting, yep, I missed the jump there. And as you can see, I'm just moving things around, seeing what works, what doesn't. Now, if you're wondering about these stairs, I actually, uh, I actually did not know what was up with the collider on that. Um, I think it was trying to approximate um, the actual colli the collision area, so I had no idea what I was doing there. And you can see I'm playtesting, getting caught on it, and wondering oh, what's going on. So I eventually find out that you just make ramps. I completely forgot that stairs really at a programming level, they're just ramps. Uh, really so I've remembered that but you can see that this is just a programming thing it's a programming bug the characters are quite colliding the way that I want it to so I just go ahead and delete that and <laughs> sort of cheap out a bit but do take into account that you should have you know 98 percent of the programming done when it comes to actually building the level but because I am working on this sort of little tutorial on my own it does get kind of difficult to sort of have programming and all the design stuff together at the same time because I'm also working so there are a few things I have to take into account so I'm just going to continue iterating just building level building parts of a level and then rebuilding it that's pretty much what the main core of level design is at the same time you want to be able to sort of teach the player at a certain pace you don't want to sort of rush things and all that mainly because the whole goal of level one, which is what I'm building, is to teach the, teach the player the, the most essential tools for completing your game. You don't want to leave them sort of hanging. And if you have like things like special abilities, you can teach them as they learn them. Right? So you don't have to worry about things like that straight away. But for platformers, really, the most essential things are running and jumping. Audio is going to kick in soon. Okay, so now we have a fairly basic level that we have. So we have, you know, a, a simple jump up here and maybe what we should do instead of just introducing gaps in the level straight away, one thing we could do, of course, is just take that for a second. I'm just going to drag this across. I'm going to put that there. So what we basically want to introduce is just slowly introduce the player to new concepts like jumping over small gaps and if they miss the jump they can always recover from that which is pretty much what the player wants. Um, you don't want to punish them too harshly. Uh, trust me, you don't. Uh, you want to introduce a, a, at least a, a decent learning curve to the player, right? You don't want to throw them right into the pit. So. So it's a very basic level. It's probably going to change probably three or four times before I actually get to something that I like. But the gist is there. Oh, whoop, did I just make it? I uh, just made the jump. <laughs> okay, so pretty much, let's uh, let's have a recap. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is establish your pixel to unit ratio. All right, and once you have that, then you can start creating your, um, your term, not texture sheet, your uh, environment so gray box so your environment design kit after you do that make sure to save it out as a PNG so that you don't get uh, any of the background saved out as well and then take it into unity slice up the, the polygons that you're gonna make and then start applying colliders to them get some basic gameplay working see what tests see if the what you've made the level that you've made makes any sense if it doesn't you can always change it that's what's good about this and make sure to play test often, play test it a lot, and try to keep things in time with the way that you wanted it designed at the beginning. So, to close off, in the next video I'm going to have a fully constructed level with hopefully platforming done by then. Until then though, keep making levels and See what you come up with. Play test once, don't just play test once, play test twice, three times, play test often. Until the next video, 
Hope you make some awesome levels. I'll see you later. Bye.